Hi everyone, in this video we'll talk about preferred location of grills and diffusers as well as design and installation aspects of these grills and diffusers. So without further ado, let's get to it. It's preferred to have separate branch to each diffuser in order to enable easy and assured air balancing. Here, the layout at the right is preferred and works to that end, while the layout at left is hard to balance and it might have excessive noise. In order to prevent noise crossing between rooms, the layout at right is required. You can see that since branches in the left layout are opposite to each other, noise is able to transfer between rooms across the corridor, such as between rooms 1 and 3 and between rooms 2 and 4. This cross noise does not occur in configuration at right, since duct uh, branches are not in the same plane, and sound from room to the opposite room has to travel in angles or zigzag motion, which result in induction of noise. Before we continue, I would like to remind you to subscribe today, hit the notification bell, and give a thumb up. Now, in this layout, in order to reduce unit noise, usually associated with the first supply diffusers, it is required to take the first diffuser branch as further as possible so there is more distance for noise to travel. As well, it is preferred to have higher friction per feet for the first branch than for the remaining duct in order to allow for easier air balancing and prevent starved last diffusers. It's recommended to have a small supply plenum for supply diffusers connected to the duct by flexible ducting. This allows for easier installation of ceiling air outlet, whether it is linear or square. The typical coverage for a supply air square diffuser is maximum around 20 square meter, though international standards state in favor of using more supply diffusers over fewer ones, even with less than 20 square meter coverage. In real life, it would not be possible to use more diffusers because false ceiling has other components other than supply diffusers such as light fixtures, sprinkler heads, smoke detectors, and so on. So it would be sensible to limit to a maximum of 20 square meters. Also, the distance between supply, air outlet, and retain air inlets is recommended not to be less than 1.8 meters, center to center so as to prevent short-circuiting of air between supply air outlets and retain air inlets, especially when we have ducted retain back to AC units. In addition, it is recommended to have the distance between two supply diffusers of minimum 2.4 meters center to center in order to prevent undesired air draft inside the room. This, of course, with proper selection of supply air diffusers which will be covered in future videos. For rooms such as small pantry, storage, toilet and alike rooms with areas less than 9 square meter, these rooms do not really need direct air conditioning and to have its own supply diffusers. What is done is to provide exhaust air inlets in this room with the supply air coming through door grills or door undercuts. As you can see in the layout, the exhaust air inlet should be as far as possible from the door in order for the supply air to sweep through the entire room before exhausting through exhaust air inlet. In order to properly and easily air balance linear diffusers so that the furthest linear diffusers are not starved, the supply duct to these linear diffusers should be branched as shown in the layout. Each branch should have its own volume control damper except for the last branch when the main duct has a volume control damper. To allow for even distribution of air in linear diffuser, the distance between two flexible ducting is preferred not to exceed around 1 meter or 3 feet. If it is a little more, it's okay, but it should not be a lot more. When you have a room with outdoor exposure with large windows, it is recommended to locate supply air linear diffusers at the exposure wall above the windows and direct supply air to the glazing. 
in order to have the supply air sweep over them and prevent hot or cold air near windows to affect the rest of the room. To wrap this up, these are the most common preferred choices for locating grills and diffusers. There are more choices. In future videos, we'll cover other configurations and choices. If you don't agree with some content of this video, please note it down in the comments below. Meanwhile, if you see a value in this video, please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, give a thumb up and share with your friends. See you later in a future video.